I'm a professor of paediatrics at the University of Sydney, which means I'm involved in research, teaching medical students, and supervising postgraduate research students. Um, but I'm also a clinician, so I'm based at a very large teaching hospital in Sydney, and there I had the Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder Assessment Clinic. Back in 2000, so 21 years ago now, I was having a discussion with a colleague about whether or not fetal alcohol syndrome, as we called it then, existed in Australia. We looked in the literature and there were only four publications. And so we set about to do a national surveillance study where we asked all the paediatricians in the country to report to us every month whether they'd seen a child with fetal alcohol syndrome. And we certainly got some reports, but we felt that there was under recognition of this disorder. And paediatricians told us that they didn't know how to diagnose it or how to manage these children. And this really set in train the next 21 years of research and education about fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Well, the thing that really keeps me motivated is that fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is potentially preventable. And every week in my clinic, I see children and their families who are facing challenges that, that are really often very difficult at, at home and at school. And really, I hope that by identifying these children earlier, we will be able to improve their opportunities to have a, a full and fruitful life. Um, I think it's very important that we identify the strengths in these children and adults and that we promote those. Um, and I think it's very important that um, we do identify children who are affected early because we can then offer them early interventions. And we know that the child's brain is very malleable and responsive to early intervention and can be retrained. So that's a, a really important thing. Um, the next thing I'd like to, um, that, that, that keeps me motivated is really to try and help women understand the impacts of drinking alcohol during pregnancy and to stop drinking if they're planning a pregnancy, when they're pregnant or when they're breastfeeding. And really to do that requires understanding of why women drink. And women don't drink to harm their baby. Women drink because they're in a stressful domestic situation. They've suffered historic trauma like many of our Aboriginal women. Um, or they're living in disadvantage, or they might have a genetic risk for alcohol use. There might be a family, family history, um, and they might be addicted to alcohol. So I think it's really important to understand why women drink, to treat them with compassion, and to try and assist them to, to stop drinking, uh, hopefully during that pregnancy. Um, and certainly during subsequent pregnancies. But I think it's also important that we we educate our society about those harms because women don't drink in isolation. And one of the key drivers to drinking at all or in pregnancy is that your partner drinks or your family drinks or you live in that situation where alcohol is readily available. So we've got to get that message back to school kids um, and to young women way, way before they're thinking about um, getting pregnant. Um, I think the most important message I want people to take away is that fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is potentially preventable, but that that's not an easy task. And it really requires all of us, clinicians, people with lived experience of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, politicians, public health people, to understand that we've all got to work together to solve this problem. Um, in Australia, we've been very lucky in that we have started to work with educators, with early childhood workers, with people in the justice professional, public health professionals, uh, drug and alcohol professionals, paediatricians, allied health professionals. It's really that cross portfolio effort that's so important because alcohol is not, uh, alcohol and alcohol use in pregnancy and fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is not just a health problem. It's a problem for the whole of community and it's a problem for all of our services. So I guess the key message is collaborate. Um, collaboration across different 
agencies collaboration across different professional groups. Uh, collaboration with families is absolutely crucial. We always include the family voice in all of our research and education um, committees. Um, the family voice is actually uh, not only crucial, but it's the most important uh, voice in everything we do. So collaboration and listen to people with lived experience. 